Nation at AFA Today. And we welcome you to the New York uh, studios of AFA Today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing what you do every day to uh, obliterate confusion in your life, to replace it with truth, and to try to think clearly. Friends, there is no greater pursuit in terms of personal development, in terms of how you can grow as an individual in almost any area of your life, spiritually, uh, physically, uh, emotionally, uh, academically, educationally, uh, whatever, whatever you wish to do, that's the most important key to it. Getting the confusion out of the way, replacing it with truth that is reliable, and in my book, there is no more reliable truth than that of the Bible, and uh, going from there to... Um, Uh, pursue clarity every single day. When you do that, when you do that, friend, you are entering into a different quality of life altogether. And uh, I just applaud you on that. Kevin McCullough is my name. Welcome to a new week. Uh, Last week was the Values Voter Summit. And uh, it took place in Washington, D.C. And a lot of the regular uh, people uh, showed up and talked about a lot of the same things that we've been talking about for the last uh, decade or so. The importance of marriage, the importance of uh, the pro-life issue, et cetera, et cetera. I was quite taken with a presentation by Senator Rand Paul, and uh, I just wanted to to have you hear just a bit of it, and uh, I'll explain why in just a second. But this was Rand Paul at the Values Voter Summit last week. In Syria, there's an ancient Christian city called Malula where they still speak Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke. They've been Christian since the time of Christ. They're a small final outpost in the Middle East for Christians. The town was recently overrun by Islamic rebels. These Islamic rebels swarmed into the town and they demanded that everyone convert to Islam or die. Sarkis el Zakam stood up and he answered them. And he said, I am a Christian. And if you want to kill me, because I am, do so. These were Sarkis' last words. Sister Carmel of Damascus said of Sarkis, his death is true martyrdom, a death in odium fide, or a death in the hatred of faith. Make no mistake, this is about your religion. Elsewhere in Syria, Islamic rebels have filmed beheadings of their captives. They've filmed themselves eating the heart of their enemy. Two Christian bishops have been kidnapped and one priest was recently killed. These rebels are allies of the Islamic rebels that President Obama is now arming. We are now arming Islamic rebels who are allied with Al-Qaeda that attacked us on 9-11. Does that make any sense at all? America absolutely doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. And uh, Rand Paul was uh, very uh, eloquent in his defense of the freedom of religion and the need for us to understand that there is a worldwide war that is on right now against uh, Christians and Jews, particularly in the radical Islamic areas of our nation. I've been telling you about a personal passion for me, uh, the uh, petition that we have drafted and that we are uh, uh, working very hard to fulfill, but we want to see million signatures be added to the defendthem.net genocide alert that was produced by the Christian Solidarity International people. But uh, it's raising the awareness of what Rand Paul was talking. He spent all 20 minutes. He didn't talk about shutdown. He didn't talk about any of that. He talked about this worldwide global war on Christianity. Uh, I I was able to get a hold of a very, very special guest just before showtime today. Her name is Heidi McGinnis. She's the uh, International Outreach Director for Christian Solidarity International. You may remember we spoke with John Eibner a little over a week ago. Uh, but uh, she, he's worked primarily in Syria and Iran and some of those places. Heidi's specialty has been in the area of the Sudan, and uh, she was gracious enough. Uh, she's a very, very busy woman working very hard on many different th- projects around the world, but she was gracious enough to spare me some time on a very busy Monday morning, and I wanted you to hear part of that conversation. This is Heidi McGinnis of Christian Solidarity International and Kevin McCullough just a little bit before showtime uh, on uh, AFA Today. And I asked her, uh, well, I, I welcomed her, and I, and I began to just talk to her right away about the importance of raising our voice together 
on the issue of the persecution of Jews and Christians worldwide. Uh, the media yawns at the reports and and doesn't speak to the radicalization of Islam that's that's occurring uh, in the Islamic Middle East and what that what that means for Christians and for Jews and also for minority Muslims who are being targeted and persecuted and and uh, we feel to the point of extinction so uh, you and I have to raise the awareness of that and to sound the alarm. Yeah, and we've been asking people, and if, if you're listening today, you may remember that in the last recent number of days, I've asked you to go to a website and sign a petition. Your signature can literally save a life, uh, but we need uh, a million signatures. And so we're, we're asking for every one of you listening to go to defendthem.net, D-E-F-E-N-D, them.net, and add your voice to the work that is being done to try to protect Christians and Jews and even minority Muslims in places where the radicals have uh, really, in recent weeks, ramped up the violence uh, to levels that we haven't seen historically for maybe um, half a century. Heidi, let's talk about this. You're an expert in Sudan, but we're talking about a window across the world that starts kind of in Syria and in kind of the northern Middle East, Iran, some of those areas, yeah. sweeps all the way all the way across example, Africa and to uh, Pakistan, but t tell us what the latest is. Well, for example, uh, Dr. John Eidner is just coming back as we're speaking from Egypt, where he will speak and be reporting about the persecution of the Coptic Christians there. Um, and Guna Vilbak, our, our colleague, has just returned from Pakistan. And Kevin, the Western media reported 60 or so uh, Christian worshippers killed in the Anglican All Saints Church on September 22nd. But Guna has, has uh, stated that the pastor with whom he met, that 126 worshippers were, uh, were killed. And, and it is so imperative for Christendom and for others, for people of conscience, to really sign the petition, because as, as we speak, Christians are being killed there in Pakistan, in Syria, in Egypt, in Nigeria, in all too many places. And it's so important when you say sign the petition, uh, it's critical because, like you say, it does save a life. We tend to think that petitions are impotent. They're not. They release people from Islamic prisons. They save lives. Uh, in, a, in an off-air conversation with one of my colleagues, Heidi, you made a historical comparison to what radical Islam is doing now and what the world saw in the pre-time uh, of Hitler in the build-up to uh, what happened, kind of uh, unbeknownst to the world, in the early part of World War II. Uh, explain that comparison. Well, I was, I was born in um, Germany right before the war was over. And, what, and I was a beggar in the streets to help my family have food and our neighbors. And so, and, and when I was seven, I was forced to go to school. But what I, I, we became experts in Ethiopia, about Ethiopia. And one day I asked the teacher, well, we, we love Ethiopia, we love Africa, but what about our own history? Why is everything in rubbles? Where are the people that used to live here, the Bergmans? What happened to them? Why, where are the men? What happened? Can you speak to our history? And the teacher said, we don't talk about that. Well, that's the eighth step of genocide, which is absolute denial that genocide occurred. But what I have heard through my family members, what I saw was that no one paid attention in Germany with Hitler's rise to power because they thought he was a lunatic. They thought, well, he'll never be in, in power. And, and then when the postmaster, when the postmistress uh, who were neighbors to my family in Germany, when she disappeared, and they said, well, you know, she didn't raise her hand in Sig Heil in all of the parades and marches. People didn't speak out. Well, and then it was too late for them to speak out. And even a German theologian said, well, I didn't, I didn't speak up when they came for uh, the brown shirts because I wasn't a brown shirt, and I didn't speak up when they came for the Jews because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for me 
and then there was no one left to speak up. Well, this is this is why it's so critical. People aren't speaking up. But thank you, Kevin McCullough, because you're gathering us in a movement. Individually, we can sign a petition and we can create a movement. We can get a million signatures. We can force the White House, we can force the administration to pay attention and to speak truth to this evil that's occurring. Yeah, defendthem.net is where you do that. D-E-F-E-N-D-T-H-E-M, all one word, defend them.net. And again, your signature can save a life. Uh, we're talking about the persecution of Christians and Jews primarily, some other religious minorities that are in the uh, Middle East. But if you've not paid attention in recent days, in almost a day-by-day uh, reporting, because if you really do scour the web, you can actually find news on this just about every day for the last three or four months, attacks on Christian villages in Syria, attacks on Christian churches in Pakistan, attacks on gathering believers in Nigeria and other places uh, across the uh, African continent. We're talking about one of the most concentrated efforts of genocide towards people based on their faith that we have seen uh, historically in, in a very, very long time. And Heidi McGinnis is with us, and she's with Christian Solidarity International. And Heidi, you, you, your specialty was Sudan. You saw what took place in Sudan uh, and is taking place in Sudan. But talk to us about uh, what, because pe- I, I think people are kind of like they were with Hitler. They kind of say, no, those radicals, they're just loonies. They're not really dangerous. They're just lunatics. Uh, they're crazy. They, dis- they dismiss them on the grounds that they are in some way just insane, not ever really accepting the fact that these people are wholly dedicated to the extermination of their opponents. Absolutely. Not only that, but when we speak out against radical Islam, and I make the distinction between radical Islam and pious observers of, uh, and, uh, observers of Islam, but uh, we're called Islamophobes. Also, there is such pervasive political correctness and cultural relativism that um, we're really silenced in, in many corridors of, of our national life. And, and within universities and schools as well. And you see, we also have been duped in the West, and we certainly were duped about Sudan and the genocide that occurred there. As a matter of fact, we don't speak to the genocide that occurred when in 1983, Omar Hassan al-Bashir, that genocide there in Khartoum, when he declared jihad against the primarily Christian South, and it was a racial war, it was a religious war, Kevin, and it was an economic war to get the mm. people off the oil fields. And, and so as a part of that, what I have seen across the decade has, was that in that genocide, slavery was also introduced as a tool of genocide. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the mind-numbing suffering, and people in the West don't want to hear about that slavery and that there are still 35,000 Christians and traditional believers enslaved because their release wasn't a part of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2005 or in 2011 when the South became free. People don't want to hear about slavery in the Sudan because then you have to ask, well, who's doing the enslaving? Well, it's radicalized Islam. It's the Janjaweed. It's the Bagara Arabs. It's an intentional tool of genocide. And Heidi McGinnis, it is not only that, it is the friends of the current administration. What we are talking about here today uh, on AFA Today is the extermination of the Bible's people from the Bible's lands. And if it bothers you the way it does me, go to defendthem.net, defendthem.net. More from Rand Paul and Heidi McGinnis when we continue on AFA Today here on AFR Talk.